Okay, so the, the next talk up we have is from Peter Cornwell, who is from Data Futures ENS Leon. And his talk is Progress with Repository Based Annotation Infrastructure for Biodiversity Applications. Hi, um, hopefully this works. Good. Um, so this reports on a project with Plazi and CERN um, on annotation infrastructure and clearly touches on several of the things that have been said um, already this morning. Um, I'm going to try and get through it relatively quickly if this doesn't work. It does work. Good. So annotation digital objects can actually be traced way back to the 40s, but we generally think of it as coming out of um, the SRI, Stanford Research International, uh, later Bill Atkinson's um, hypercard, which some people might remember. Um, please work. So this rather immodest um, slide of CERN kind of puts some of the interesting things in, in a timeline. Um, round about 2007, 2008, it became clear that a lot of annotation undertaken using the myriad of tools that had been developed by that point was getting lost at a, um, a scary rate. And I've got some examples of, of uh, some things that involved considerable investment that were on the point of being lost and a huge amount of money was forked out over again to actually re-deliver them and make them um, serviceable for the future. So some of what I'm talking about comes out of this thing in 2019, the HASDAI agreement with CERN, um, perhaps most of you have heard of Zenodo. This HASDAI thing is a distributed um, network of corpus repositories, and I'll develop that idea in um, some minutes. But the point underlying all of this is that the same open repository infrastructure underpins all of these things. So Zenodo is an institutional repository, and we now have versions of it driving the Caltech Institutional Repository and also at Northwestern. But these little corpus repositories use exactly the same software platform and investment in annotation infrastructure can plug into all of the instances of these repositories. Um, could you advance it for me? No. Should we proceed by the seat of the pants? Or wait. Go one more. So very briefly, um, annotation falls into two main camps, standoff annotation where the infrastructure that manages the annotation them, them, themselves, they comprise targets and bodies, is in one place, and what you're annotating is in another place. Embedded annotation, you actually modify the digital file that describes the object and include the annotations in line. That second approach turns out to be kind of impractical from a versioning and bloat perspective. And what I'm going to show you briefly in a minute is the early experience of standoff annotation which led to everything being lost because different management and other um, infrastructure decisions were applied to the different components of the annotations and the material that was had been annotated. So could you go again? Okay, um, so the, one of the underlying threads here is that it was not evident in the 2000s that care and attention needed to be lavished on the source material because the specific digital version of a bug, a document, a painting is the reference for the annotations. The coordinate frame for the targeting is defined by that specific digital version. And if someone re-digitizes it, or if they convert it from a TIFF to a JPEG, it actually invalidates 
the annotations. And this is not immediately clear, but a simple example is that if you crop a document, then the coordinate frame changes and then the annotations move. And we can see some examples of this. These are hand scrolls. Some of this is from the humanities, um, but it does get onto biodiversity in a couple of minutes. These things are seven meters long and they're right at the extent of the pixel limit of JPEG. So there is a maximum number of pixels you can get, get into the JPEG standard. But what we found was happening is that someone had made decisions in the way that the infrastructure was, was managed and developed and without anyone realizing the files had been exchanged. So tens of thousands of SVG paths had become invalidated. So these things have been drawn by hand. Similarly here, you can actually see that this isn't quite round because the aspect ratio had changed because the file format had been converted in addition to being scaled. So that's Greece and now Rome. Um, so open repository platforms really try to address this problem at fundamental level by being able to manage the annotations, the targets and the bodies in a common infrastructure with enough strength to support terabytes of digitized imagery. And I previewed this, I'm not, not gonna dwell on it, but basically the timeline that I had in the beginning, the early days of um, um, Invenio have now ended up in 2023 with a version of Invenio that incorporates annotation technology and in particular IIIF um, natively within the repository. And we could do things like this with it. So this is a hundred years of newspaper digitized at relatively high resolution, it's about 10 terabytes. And there's a million annotations on this, which are the result of a manual da data set generated by manual annotation which has created OCR, and then the OCR has been used with another training set to identify advertisements. And this project has produced um, a million annotations on 10 terabytes of information within a year or two. And the success of the um, segmentation and the OCR underpinning it is in the high 90s. So this is, a free and open source IIIF viewer incorporated within the corpus repository. So the two components are maintained by their independent consortia and the whole infrastructure operates as software as a service. So we'll not dwell on this because of um, losing time, but what I do want to talk about is that we can now use WADM, which is implemented natively within the, this, this is a corpus repository, as a convergence layer. So we can take existing annotation performed using historic tools. The Japanese scrolls were a pile of Java that no longer exists, but it produced XML, which was poorly defined, and that was converted into WADM. Here, what we've done is to take the European Journal of Taxonomy and create a IIIF service for all of the publications and, and automatically transform getting on a million annotations on the European Journal of Taxonomy into WADM and against a IIIF service. So the leap with this Arcadia project is to take it one step further and what we can now do, and you can go look at it, there's a little sample, which is not EJT, it's actually harvested from, from Zenodo, but this has existing treatment bank, Plasi treatment bank annotations made against literature. It's been harvested back out of Zenodo, a corpus repository built automatically within, a, uh, took a couple of hours, I suppose. Um, but what it now allows you to do is go edit those annotations. So you can not only see the historic XML Plasi annotations inbound in the repository, but you can authenticate using ORCID and you can edit those annotations, you can create new ones, and you're not limited to boxes because it's IIIF. So you have deep zoom, 
and arbitrary drawing tools. And when you save that, because you've authenticated with ORCID, it answers your question, which is you then got a traceable history. And pr probably I'm out of time, but what is important to say is that you need a separate annotation service because obviously you need a temporary store for people fiddling with annotations before they commit. But there are some critical things you need to do that you couldn't do without a separate service, like a cross page and cross line continuations. But it means you can also serialize out in a number of different formats. So you can make custom annotation collections for particular viewers. So I've talked about Mirador. Okay. I'm going to finish though, if you don't mind. <laughs> I feel robbed. Um, you can make sub collections of annotations to avoid cluttering an editing and enrichment screen, because if you've tasked someone with fixing vernacular names, you don't want to crowd them out with tax on ranks and whatever. So you need to be able to craft annotation collections for particular workflows. But we also can plug and play different IIIF tools so we can have different annotation GUIs which are good at different things. But unfortunately, some of those are not WADM. They're things like OADM, which predates WADM, in fact very little actually supports WADM natively. But it now doesn't matter because having a separate annotation service, we can re-serialize the internal preservable WADM as OADM for use within that application and then serialize it back to WADM when it commits. Hopefully that made some sense. I could take some questions now, but thank you for listening. There are no questions online, but if anyone has a question in the room, just really quickly. Can I? Yeah. Cool. Uh, I was interested in the, the IIIF tools you showed for like drawing regions on uh, images to annotate them. How do you see that? Um, uh, the work that we might do to support such a system, how do, how do you see that with uh, tools like Label Studio, which are which are very much designed for uh, annotating and labelling up images for machine learning? They seem to have very similar tools, yeah, yeah. and obviously that's a commercially a very widely used system at the moment, yeah. uh, progressing quite faster than we might be able to. Um, this is really now got to the point where we can use WADM as a convergence layer. Sorry. Okay. So we're using WADM as a layer, and it's relatively straightforward to script gizmos to convert the output of this, that, and the other um, to WADM. And then the annotation store will serialize it for use for editing. So you need a IIIF capable viewer in order to present within the repository because this this is actually done inbound in the repository and one of the, the the powerful things about that is that you can use all the repository tools for authentication and someone else maintains the security of the wretched thing and when python changes and the internet uh, browser business alters someone else takes care of it so it's important to converge onto specific standards and APIs around the repository. But that strategy allows you to actually convert stuff in and out from foreign applications. So Treatment Bank, is Guido here? Mm, no. So Treatment Bank produces XML. Um, it only deals with boxes. But the example I had with the skeletal thing, um, resolves to a box if you want to export it to Dreamer Bank. Does that kind of go towards answering the question? Um, I'd be very happy to demonstrate this. It's all working online, um, and the URLs are in the for, uh, slides. 
Thanks.